Hi guys, I'm at a friend's house. I fitted a couple of radiators here a couple of weeks ago. I didn't want to put the inhibitor in um, when I was here just to make, because I was just a bit unsure whether, you know, if, if we had a leak um, on any of the pipe work going to the radiators or any, you know, of the new valves or anything or the, the radiator tail. So we, we filled up a couple of weeks ago. Come back today, everything's great. The pressure's holding on the boiler, so everything is as it is. Because uh, there's nothing worse than filling a system or putting your inhibitor in. Inhibitor now is like 20 pounds for, for a tub. So if you have a leak and then you've got to drain the system again, you're losing that. So, so it's always good to fill it up first, give it, give it a week, make sure it's fine, and then come back. However, at this property, we had an absolute nightmare. It's an old boiler with it getting air locked and you know, getting the boiler going again. So the boiler is going, it's great, it's been going for a couple of weeks, but we want to put the inhibitor in the system now. Therefore, I don't want to drain or lose the pressure on the boiler and risk it getting air locked. So what I have bought today is the inhibitor in a pressurized can. So we're gonna, this is what the video is about. It's putting the Sentinel X100 into the system without having to lose any pressure at the boiler. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna isolate this one radiator upstairs, so we can isolate it at both sides, um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna put this into here, just into the one radiator. So first of all, take these caps off. You can sometimes use these caps to Isolate, but these, these isolation valves are really stiff. They've not been used for a long time. So I've took the caps off using my grippers before, and then you can use a little spanner to turn the valves. We want to go righty clockwise and get these turned off fully. One's off. Again, let's turn this one clockwise. Right, so they're both turned off. So that means this radiator now is still under pressure. It's under the same pressure as the rest of the system. If you go down to the boiler, the, the boiler's on like one bar. So the, the system's all, you know, under pressure, but this, this radiator is, is isolated from it. So when I bleed the radiator now, it's only going to take the pressure out of this one radiator. It's not going to empty the radiator, it's just going to take the pressure out so it basically would be like zero bar. So we need to just open. It's actually got a bit of air in as well, so that's not a bad thing. It needed, it needed a. So we're not even going to get much water out of it, it's just going to be the air, which is good. So that is actually gone in our favour because we're going to take. We now know this radiator, it's, it's got water, and I don't know where to because there was some air, but when I take this, this end cap off now, we're not going to get water out anywhere. So we can, we can remove them. If we can. I might need my grippers on him because it's a bit... No, that's a before I forget, make sure you close, close this one again. So we know it's not under pressure anymore. 
and we can remove this without water spraying everywhere. water just coming out, that's why I've got the dust sheet down, I'll put, the, put my tray underneath as well, so you might get a little bit of water coming, coming out. So we can remove that, we've not got any water, so that's good. So that's a complete open end on that radio, and to prove that we've not affected the boiler, let's quickly go downstairs. Because the radiator is fully isolated, the boiler and the rest of the radiator should all be under, yeah, nearly one and a half bar of pressure. So, we're not going to affect the boiler in any way. I mean, it's not going to get any air trapped in it. It's not going to get air locked again. So, so now, to the part that I don't really like because I've only used these, these, these on a couple of occasions and I've not really enjoyed them and I phone Sentinel a couple of occasions even though I like the company and I like the brand and, and um, their product the, the explanations about to actually use these tins is pretty poor and the instructions on it are pretty poor that's why I'm making this video to be honest because I, yeah, I've never really enjoyed it and never, you know, it's, it's took a couple of goals to work out how to do it. So this is how I'm going to do it today. Comes with a can, it came with this connected to it, which I've just took off. A couple of different connections of how it can go onto the radiator. But you put this onto the radiator first. So there's a couple of different attachments here. So this can come off, you've... you've yeah, so we need a male connection, a male thread. So yeah, for that needs to come off. Needs to come off. So we're going to take that off. That's that would be maybe on a different radiator, but on this radiator here, we need this thread, which can go into here, like so. Can you just do it with your hand? But oh, I'm gonna. When this tin goes into here, it's quite high pressure, so you want you want this connection pretty good. You don't want this stuff going everywhere. It needs to be, you know. So we'll, we'll tighten it fully. Get right into the radiator. Sure, that's pretty pretty adequate. Yeah. So that's in there. That connection's tight. This is the scary bit. You've got to get this. This little thing here, this little section, is going to break. That when it breaks, this can's going to become quite high pressurised. So you need to push it on, break this seal, and then twist. So this little bayonet fit in here locks onto these lugs. So it's a case of pushing it on and twisting it. If you push it on and don't twist it, you could find the tin cut blasting off in, you know, with, with the stuff everywhere, and it's horrible stuff. So it needs to be pushed on and twisted, and that's why I don't really like this, because it's a... You know, it's not for the faint hearted, I don't think. I'm not a massive fan. So let's try. So come round here, Paul. <coughs> I'm going to get in the bath and get in a good position. So we need to lap, push him up. We're going to push him in and twist him. Okay? 
you don't need to shake him. You will feel it, it's all lumpy in there. That is how it's supposed to be. It's not gone off or anything. It's not, it, 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 it's not like the liquid that you get in the tubs. It will go into liquid once it, it, it hits, hits the water in the central heat system. So, right, let's do it. You ready, guys? We're going to break him, twist him. One, two, three. Yeah, we're on and we're locked. You can come over and you can hear him going in. And he's going in there. To be honest, that wasn't as bad as I thought. As long as you've done your preparation, you've got him connected properly, he's not going to come away. Um, you, you, you get him on there, you can see how I've pushed him on, and um, it's like a kind of like a bayonet fitting, so you put him on, to, and that feels empty. Don't ask me how, how long exactly it lasts, how long it takes to do, but you know, you can tell that that's pretty much empty now. So we've, we've emptied the tin, can't really, feels like it's, it's empty, you know, give it a few more seconds just to make sure, but, I mean it does say on here, simplest ever system dosing. So it is easy once you get to know it, but you've just got to make sure you connect it on there and you connect it on there. And do a bit of preparation. And you've got to make sure you've took the pressure out of the system as well. You don't want this full of, full of pressure. So this was on zero pressure. We isolate both valves and, we, and we've let the pressure out, which was the air. Usually you'd get water coming out of there. That occasion there was just a bit of air trapped at the top of the radiator that came out and took the pressure out. So let's take him off, get the little cap ready to go back on. pressure in there now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just, um, I'm just going to open this little air vent a little bit, just to see if we can, well that's just, that's water now, so, well, I mean I do, you get some rags, put them in there, just why a bit comes out, but you want to you want to take this off and get this on as quick as you can. You're not going to lose it. It's it's mixed in with all the system water now. So. But you've got to remember, you know, it's full of. Make sure we've fully got these closed. Well, we've not got any pressure coming. Right, let's take that off. Tighten that just a little bit more, give it a little nip, make sure. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this and I'm going to open this. because it's built up a bit of pressure there. So let's just... Just take that pressure out. Yeah, so we've took the pressure out in a controlled way there, using the air vent, rather than taking that end off and... Yeah, right. So, we now know there's no pressure in. Well, let's do it as quick as we can, just in case the valves are passing at all. So let's just get this off and get the end cap on quick. So. Because you don't want this, you know, 
last thing into your face when you take it off. So always check the other side first. So I've got the cap, I'm going to take them off, take the can off, and uh, and you've got to remember what's in there is the equivalent of basically a litre of inhibitor. It's the equivalent of a litre, so by putting that litre in there, it's going to increase the volume um, of liquid in the radiator. So that's just to increase the pressure of the rad, and that's you know, probably why we just need to take a little bit out the other side. But we're on now, we've got, we've got it in, tighten him up. Could have done with a new end cap actually here, but right, he's nice and tight. Right, so what we're going to do is now open these, introduce the pressure back into the system, and we're going to to be fair, I'm going to open this at the same time. So as it, as the system opens, we can get rid of any air. dripping a bit, I'm going to just let it go onto the dust yet and then open this side. Close him. Valves won't start leaking now. I mean, they've not been opened, well, they've not been closed in 20 years. So that's, that's hopefully, it's not going to upset them, but I'm glad they happen. You'd have to change the valves and then all this. Comes up. A bit of a waste of time. But anyway, hopefully, they'll be fine. Um, so system fully open again, it's just make sure there's no air in. Yeah, full of water. What we're going to do now is go downstairs and flip the boiler on. So we're going to have a guest appearance by Paul now. He can go and turn, <laughs> turn his boiler on and hopefully... <coughs> That inhibitor will get pumped around the system. And that is job done. Give me feet to wipe on this mat. So yeah, pressure still as it should. Boiler's fired up lovely. Might need a little bit of water added into it. Just a touch. Pulls this mat in, it's dropped a little bit pressure, but it's still over one bar and it's still, you know, I'm happy with that. So that's up to him if he wants to put a bit more in, but that, that's fine by me. And we're, we're all good, so we're going to leave the boiler on now for a few minutes and, and just let it pump the new added inhibitor around the system. Right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. I, I can't say I enjoy um, using that that type of inhibitor, but you know, it, it serves its purpose. Right, thanks a lot Gabe, cheers, have a good Saturday, bye bye.